Okay, so this tutorial is going to cover um, some basic fundamentals in V-Ray for Rhino and get you guys set up so you can start to render some of the materials and build some of the materials that you want to have in your scene. Uh, so I've already set the primary rendering engine and the V-Ray for Rhino. Um, so I'm going to do a couple of things uh, real quick. I'm just going to get a new layer. I'm going to call this the ground. Uh, and then I'm going to create an infinite plane. If I have a nice horizon in there, I'm just going to lock that. And then I'll also go back and I'll lock it in here. So that way I have something in here uh, that I can render again. Uh, V-Ray comes with uh, a couple of nice options, uh, at least this version does, where I can start to uh, load up some preset uh, visualization settings. Uh, I'll go through some of the other settings uh, in another tutorial, but this is basically just to get you guys going in terms of setting up materials and, and how they apply to surfaces. So I'm going to build a surface. And I'm going to move that up out of the, the ground plane so that I can actually see what it's doing. Because um, obviously, if you have the materials occupying the same space, they're going to collide and fragment. It's going to create real issues. Um, this is a side note. When you guys are building materials, you need to pay attention to that. Uh, sorry, modeling your geometry. Even if they're off by a hundredth of an inch or something like that, very small, uh, you can start to build that up so they don't actually collide and it doesn't confuse the machine. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close that down. I'm going to pull up our material editor here, and uh, you can see I've already started to work this out. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that out. Oh, delete that away. So we're going to start off with one of the, the generic materials here. So I'm just going to duplicate that. Uh, we're going to pull this up. There's a couple things that I'm going to activate here. I'm basically going to be showing you guys how to build some maps uh, onto a generic surface here. Uh, we shouldn't have to mess with the color too much, um, although you can start to that can start to adjust the intensities. Uh, so the first thing I want to do, I'm basically going to be building a brick pattern here. So I'm going to come in here, and uh, if I actually go on to uh, minimize this, uh, I go on to my desktop. I've built a series of these images um, that are basically setting me up. Now, it's important that you guys note that these two guys are actually going together, and this one is not. Uh, this is from a previous version. Uh, when you guys are building these maps, you need to consider the four sides. Uh, think about this like Super Mario Brothers. They build the map so that this brick can sit and this brick can sit, and it'll build up a pattern um, that'll simulate uh, how the brick pattern is going to actually function. Uh, so you have to consider how the, these four sides are going to touch uh, when you're building that. And I've done that in both of these versions of that. When you guys are building maps, um, it's black and white uh, can be used for transparency maps. Um, and that's interpreted differently by different softwares. Uh, in Studio Max, um, black is transparent and white is opaque. Uh, in V-Ray, uh, it's just the opposite. And so the black is going to be opaque and white is going to be transparent uh, when you guys into the building of those maps. Uh, and that has implications when you guys are thinking about bump maps and displacement maps, which I'm going to show you guys how to set up. Uh, then I'm going to I've set up some basic color mapping as well, so that we can start to project some uh, some color onto our brick facade as we build it up. Um, You'll be using these things sort of um, in concert with each other so you can actually get those things to sync up. So I will go ahead and select a line on here. And so we can go ahead and uh, come in here. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a bitmap. Uh, and then we're going to set the file. Uh, it's on my desktop here. And we're doing the diffuse color, so that's going to be actually how this thing is going to render out. Uh, so we're going to pick the brick color. Um, we hit update here. We can see that this is updated. Uh, and you can see there's now a capital M. And if we hit update, you can see that this is now set up. OK, and so uh, if we go over to our material here, we can go ahead and if we select that, we can right click and apply that material to the object. Render that out. Gosh, it's a gigantic brick pattern, right? And that doesn't isn't really doing what we want it to do. Uh, and this is where things get uh, a little bit different from some of the other stuff uh, that you might be familiar with. So what we can do is we actually want to start to tile that material. Uh, you should not have to mess, mess with it in here. Uh, if you look at the way that this is mapping, you want it to be one UV coordinate for each thing. Uh, and you want to define the U and V settings elsewhere, and yeah, that's going to be surface specific. So if I come over here to the selected surface, and under its properties, I can go to texture mapping. And check the box to show advanced texture mapping. Then hit add. Uh, and then I'm going to scroll down here. And um, this is, if I look at the type of this, I can scroll down. I want to generate a planar uh, surface widget here. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit 
show. And I can't see that yet uh, because it's actually occupying the same size. That's why that rendered out to be the uh, the full tile guy there. But if I scroll down, I get some options in here. Um, and so I can uh, see the size of the units in here and I can see the UNV subdivisions and all that. Um, but then if I go into the size, um, I can actually start to adjust this down and you're going to see this update immediately. So I can start to set this based on the units that I want to prescribe in here. So if I zoom in, we have our nice little widget and I can actually select that and so turn it to set told it to show. Um, and now if I, I that I've adjusted that, if I go and re-render, all of a sudden the brick pattern has actually been applied and subdivided uh, the surface based on those UV values. Uh, so this is really um, starting to get pretty handy here. If we zoom in, you can actually see it's just a quick render. And you can see how that's starting to work and how my, my plan for the four-sided uh, four geometries have linked up. All right, and so I can close that out. Um, once you guys have done this, in general, I, I found it easier to adjust the widget um, in plan or in section, uh, basically getting it to set up so you guys can link that out. The nice thing about this, though, is if you select it, we can do really fun stuff. Uh, we can move it around. Say your pattern doesn't align with an edge. Uh, I move in the large snaps here. We can grab that end and then move it to that corner. So that way we know exactly how our, our uh, UV mapping is actually going to be applied to the surface. And hopefully you set up your surface so that it's I got them, uh, the appropriate dimension to it relative to how you're subdividing this. Um, the other thing we can do is I'll pull this out. We can start to adjust uh, simple things like if you have a, you can start to rotate this around and I'll zoom in and re render this. So you can start to adjust how this thing is being tiled across the geometry. So you really have a lot more control um, through the widget about how this stuff is going to be applied. And this is essentially where I want this because this is going to be a brick pattern. I know the tiles that I designed were set up uh, around that that module. Uh, so I can go ahead and, and just leave that as is. Uh, once I have that, I can just go ahead and I'll just go back to object properties. And go ahead and just rotate this into place. Okay, and so now we have our guy set up with an infinite plane here. Uh, now, getting back to the material editor, uh, we want to do some a little bit more advanced stuff. Uh, fault mapping is uh, okay if we want to give us a little bit of thickness. Um, I find displacement mapping to be um, a lot more effective visually when rendering it. It does increase the amount of render time, but it's um, it actually physically modifies the geometries in here. Um, so if I click this, I can uh, I'm going to do another uh, bitmap. Here, and I'm going to go ahead and, uh, depending on what you want to have happen here, we can select uh, the brick here. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit update. And you notice this part of the set. I hit apply. And if I hit update here, uh, we have this really, really fantastic uh, geometric modification here on our uh, sphere. Now, when I come in here, oh, I'll zoom in. And we'll just get to quick render. You should be able to start to see this brick uh, off the side coming through here. I'm going to shine the mountain. Put up a quicker render for this. If you want to turn off that little widget while we wait for this to come off, you can turn that down too. So this is a great way of uh, very quickly and easily uh, generating material thickness uh, out of your modeling software stuff. So, uh, and obviously we didn't have to model every single brick. We just started to find the parameters for that uh, and set that up appropriately. Start to see. Shaded. And it actually looks like I, I sort of messed up here. Uh, this is why we test things. If you look, our uh, 
our mortar has actually uh, come out here and our brick has been set back. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close that out. And then we go into our material editor and this is really easy to fix. Um, Siri has this nice invert. So it's inverting automatically. I don't have to go into Photoshop and create any new tile. So I update that. And it's going to do that. Sometimes the visualization doesn't quite work, so you can come in here. All right, and we have a brick pattern.